What's going on, guys? Welcome to America Patriot News. And today I got Jerome Davis, son here, and he's running for Congress, 4th uh, Congressional District in, uh, in Arizona. And he's also an author and a former NFL football player. So uh, you're a man of all trades, it looks like to me. And what, what made you decide to run for Congress? I see that we're in one of the greatest political, spiritual battles that we've seen since the Bible times, since King David. King David was a man who was known for two things, for worship and for war. And he was anointed for both. And I believe I'm anointed for this political time. I'm, I'm anointed for political war. I couldn't wake the churches up. I couldn't get the churches involved in this political thing to get them to stop attacking President Donald Trump with these lies. Because if they attack that man, he was innocent. No matter what you think about him, he, he has been innocent. And if the FBI was in up our back ends as much as they was, they was they would have found something. But they haven't found anything on Trump. So I was just upset with the lies. I don't like lies. Uh, people get killed for that. People lose their career. They lose their lives behind that. And uh, so I decided to get in the, in the political race. It really hurt my career uh, ministry wise uh, with traveling and selling books and stuff like that. But now it's picked up because I believe a lot of people are waking up. I stood strong. I stood against the storm. And uh, I was waking a lot of people up and a lot of people have come to the light. Many have switched over to the Republican Party. And I told them it's not about being in the party. It's about not voting for the Antichrist. Yeah, uh, I've noticed a lot of people from uh, all communities, including the African-American community, as well as the Hispanic community, has moved over to the Republican Party because they see the lies that are coming from the Democrat Party. They're saying they're for democracy, but yet they don't want democracy to happen. They don't want to have an actual election against Donald Trump to happen. My question is, when it comes to the border, what's your plan on that? Well, I'm going to vote to secure the border. The, the border needs to be closed. Uh, uh, Secretary Mayorkas should be should have been impeached. Uh, Biden should have been impeached. Instead of trying to worry about what's happening with Hunter Biden's laptop and with the money, all that stuff, we can get that stuff later. But we can impeach Joe Biden on not securing this country. It is a national security issue. The border needs to be closed. A lot of people are dying on both sides. Uh, innocent civilians and citizens of this country are dying. Illegals are coming over here, murdering them, breaking them in home invasions, stealing their cars, raping their daughters. I mean, this is something we have never seen, never even dreamed what happened in this country. I will vote to secure that border. I would not send another dime to Ukraine, nor to Israel, to, to any other war around the country. And uh, I want to secure our borders and I want to send those people back to their countries. And if they want to enjoy the blessing of America, then you come to this country correctly. Come through the immigration process. Amen. And uh, the other thing also is I want to let you know, I didn't know who you were until when you ran for Congress in 2022. And I saw your commercial you put out. <laughs> and let's just say it stirred up a lot of uh, people's emotions and yes. especially on the Democrat Party. So uh, yeah. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the commercial before I play it. Well, uh, it is something that really from my childhood, really, uh, I, I, I lived in Mississippi, born and raised. My father was a truck driver. My mother was a Christian homemaker. And, um, and my father believed in having guns in the house. And so uh, there would be times when they would say that the Ku Klux Klan was coming down our street. They're doing a Ku Klux Klan march and everybody would have their children in before dark. But my older brother and I got up on the rooftop with my father's guns. We were not afraid. And if they had tried to attempt to break into our home, then we were willing to defend ourselves. And that's where this comes in at. The Democrat Party is the party of the Jim Crow laws. It is the party of the division and racial hate. It is the party that caused this country to fight a bloody, deadly civil war because they wanted to keep uh, slavery in this country. And it bothers me. It hurts me. It really takes sleep away from me to see our people helping, aiding, and voting for the very party who hates the color of their skin. So you're for uh, the Second Amendment then? Um, Second Amendment all the way, two-way all the way. <laughs> and that's what this, this, this video is about. It's about me using uh, my Second Amendment right to protect myself. The Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15, but there's times when you may need one, and that video explains it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15 for self-defense that no one could possibly need all 30 rounds. But when this rifle is the only thing standing between your family and a dozen angry Democrats in Klan hoods, you just might need that semi-automatic. 
in all 30 rounds. That shook them up. That shook them up. That thing went around the world so quickly. As a matter of fact, in Australia, they, their news channel got millions and millions of views because their guns were taken away from them and the government took over. They're still on a semi-lockdown from COVID. You know why? Because they can't defend themselves because they're defenseless. They're like sitting ducks. They're like fish in a barrel because uh, the government knows that they can do anything to them because the people can't defend themselves. Yeah. If you look at history, anytime a totalitarian government takes away the guns, what happens? People start uh, dying. That's right. Time. And what they want to do is haul us off into uh, concentration camps, what they call uh, re-education camps. They want to teach us that a man can have a baby. They want to teach us that a boy can be a girl. They want to reform our minds to thinking that a girl could be a boy. They want to shift us around. But uh, that's a mental illness. And um, and if we're going to give glory to God, we got to bless him from what he created from the beginning. God made male and female and he blessed them. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. And that's what this is really designed. The abortion plan, uh, the uh, the mutilation, mutilization plan for the children. All of that is about stopping repopulation, which was the blessing of God. And anything that is opposite of the blessing is a cursing. I want to add something to it. I think it's also uh, they're a plan to try to say that, hu uh, that human beings and God are on the same level. And right. they're not. We're down here. God's all the way up here. Right. That's, that's we why can't we look forget up in the middle. We can't you forget the ones that are in the middle. The Bible says that he made them a little lower than the angels. Yep. And so and, and if we're less than the angels, the angels already know. That there's no one who is greater than Elohim, the almighty God, the one who made the heavens and the earth. According to Job, they rejoiced when they saw him make the stars and the planets. They were amazed. They were blown away at the power of God, at, the, at how he spoke and, and the worlds were framed. And they know that they're not greater than him. And for human beings to even lift up our heads, to even exalt ourselves in pride is just really horrible. But that's science for you. That's their science. But true science testifies of the existence of God and that there's male and female, no other genders, just two. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about your uh, uh, running for office and, and your uh, primary is on July 30th. Now, yeah. I know they just had a primary there in Arizona for the president. Why did they decide to move this one to July 30th? Well, that was the normal process that what we just had for President Donald Trump was a special uh, uh, election was a special primary election for the president. So President Donald Trump won handily. It was very easy. And um, and they, they actually moved the date up. It, it usually landed in the first week of August, and uh, but they moved it forward just a couple of weeks, maybe a week. So now it's in uh, July 30th. And we're expecting big numbers. We're expecting to win because my message is winning. The message of getting back to the kitchen table issues, the message of lowering the price of gas, and the price of rent here is crazy. I just knocked on the door of a family who's paying $3,000 a month. They're about to be evicted because they can no longer pay it because the price of gas have just gone up again. They're paying $4, uh, $4 for a, a gallon. And, and they're having to choose between a six pack of drumsticks and, and an eight pack of top ramen. People are really struggling. They're maxing out their credit cards. And I wanna do is stop the spending. Start cutting the taxes for Americans, cut taxes for small and big, large businesses where they could survive and start paying larger wages and start hiring. This is how you get the economy going. And don't forget what is one of what, what is under our feet, our oil. America is rich in resources, but the Democrat and, and Joe Biden policies cut that off. And when he cut that off, the price of oil and gas shot through the roof and so did inflation. So my, my message is winning. And then don't forget my, my great message, my great issue uh, is the Internet Bill of Rights, freedom of speech on these platforms. And I and that encompasses quite a few things. Uh, can you explain some of the things that are in that uh, platform? Oh, yes. Uh, so not only does it protect our freedom of speech on social media, uh, but it also claws back the data that the data is the biggest commodity in the world. N not oil, not gold, data, data and these big Big tech platforms are selling the data from your phone when you do a text, when you do a video, when you search for a, a, a nearby restaurant. All of that data is being recorded and sold around the world. Well, in my Internet Bill of Rights, 
I'm asking for the clawback that everyone whose data is being sold receive a percentage of that data. And the people that I know, my grandparents and my, my mother can use an, an extra five, six hundred dollars a month from that data that's being sold or either they can opt out. Also, the Internet Bill of Rights is stopping the emerging technologies from taking over our brain. There's technologies that they put out in these new cars that's coming out in 2026 that has mind and emotional reading technology. Well, that's the invasion of the mind. They have no right to do that. Your mind is your sovereign uh, property, and they cannot invade your mind and read your thoughts nor introduce thoughts into your brain. That's my Internet Bill of Rights, but there's some other things in there, too, that I'd like to to bring up, but it'll stop them from uh, attacking our um, uh, PayPal, stop them from attacking our bank uh, establishment, stop them from going after our emails and stuff like that. Yeah, it, hopefully it'll end deep banking because that's happened a lot to a lot of conservatives uh, when it comes to uh, uh, YouTubers and also even people like General Flint got deep banked. Yeah. He got uh, deep banked. Uh, yeah. The PayPal said that they could they have the right to take up to twenty five hundred dollars out of your bank account. Well, my inter my internet bill of rights will stop that. Yeah, I want everybody to Google that. They said it just in the open, and then they took it back. And then they came back and said that they can do it. Well, we want to stop that. Also, my internet bill of rights would stop and prevent uh, social scoring. It's already uh, taking place in China, and it's actually already taking place here in America. We are being fenced in by a a, a, a digital prison. And they're being locked in. And once they get to these 15 minute cities, well, then you won't be able to buy beef with so much beef and you won't be able to buy with so much gas to travel. And uh, so wake up, America. You need people like Pastor Jerome Davidson in Congress to fight for you. At least I have enough vision and spiritual fortitude to fight for you. I love humanity and I love everyone, whether you're Democrat or Republican or independent. I love humanity. Uh, what do you think about Neuralink? Neuralink, I don't know much about it. What, okay. what is it? Uh, Neuralink is what uh, Elon Musk has developed, and he's using it to help people uh, uh, to uh, be able to hear again and see again. I actually like that development, but my mm -hmm. problem is it could actually, people could access that, hack into it, and read your thoughts. It could yeah. possibly could go that direction and uh, not, maybe even control you. And that's the, my concern. And I think I, I think the technology is interesting, but the thing is, in the wrong hands, that's where you're going to have problems. And I think that's where he he actually came out and had some concerns about the AI and the emerging technologies. That unless we slow them down, they're going to overtake us. And that's why I'm saying to people, please help me get into Congress. Donate five or ten dollars to my campaign. I'm grassroots all the way. I will not accept a corrupt lobby dollar for nothing. OK, I'd rather lose the race because I'm not desperate to win. And I'm praying that God would touch the hearts of citizens like like those that are listening to just go to my website, Jerome for Congress and pitch in five or ten bucks. I know that the Biden economy has made things tough, but unless we get some people in there that's got enough forethought and for vision. Most of my opponents are just acting as if these are just the run of Reagan days, but these are not. We just came through a two year shutdown. We were forced to inoculate it. People were kicked off their jobs. The military is being transformed into an LGBT establishment. I mean, World War III is on the verge of this is not. We need to get strong people in there who are going to vote for the America first agenda. And while we're doing that, we want to get back to the principles that made us the great country that we are. Faith, family and freedom. Faith, family and freedom. Uh, did you happen to check out the ominous bill that just came out? Uh, passed through the House and Senate. What do you think about that? It's disgusting. It is a horrible bill. Uh, Johnson was a, a, a huge disappointment, but I told people when he came in and I heard that speech and he was trying to uh, to acquiesce and appease, appease the Democrats. And I said to myself, this this guy is a is a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. And he proved that when he signed that bill, he ignored the 72 hour bill and tried to get that thing through in one night. And where no one else had a chance to read it, uh, it's sending money to LGBT institutions. It's funding abortions. It ignored our open border while sending money to Ukraine and sending money around the world for education and different platforms in other nations that has nothing to do with America. So, yeah, it is truly disgusting. It is an anti-America bill. I would have never, ever. I don't care how many 
How much time? 24 hours? My name would never be on any such bill. Never. I, I completely agree with you. I think uh, uh, Johnson was is the biggest disappointment to MAGA in a long time. And yeah. the other thing is I want to switch over to the border. And what do you think about the Mexico uh, president? Prince Beck blackmailing the president of the United States saying, hey, you give up money. You uh, legalize some of the uh, Mexican-Americans or Mexicans in the, United, in the United States, legalize them. And if you do that, we'll slow down the immigration in your country. Wow. They would have never did that under President Donald Trump. They would have never. And when President Donald Trump was telling them that we're going to send them back and they said, no, we're not going to accept them back. Trump said, OK, well, we'll just withhold the money. OK, because we're sending you guys billions of dollars for no reason. We're sending them money, billions of dollars in aid. It's not even a loan. We're just sending them money. At, at some point, the American bank, the piggy bank of America has, has got to close. It's got to close to Europe. It's got to close to the UN. It's got to close to Mexico and begin to focus on our citizens. We have citizens on the street. We have people with medical conditions. I knocked on a woman's door the other day and, and she was telling me that she's 70 years old and she works at the bank, but she can't see that she can retire now because she has a daughter who's 40 years old suffering from MS. She has to take care of her and, and they won't give her SSDI. But these illegals come over here and they're eligible right away. They get $9,000 a month. Um, um, so no, these are, this stuff, stuff is horrible. And, and if President Trump, when President Donald Trump gets back in and, uh, the Mexican drug cartel is doing what they're doing to our citizens and doing to our uh, uh, border protectors. There will be a, a war at that border and President Donald Trump and America will win. Did you happen to see that one story where a uh, illegal immigrant, he is suing the United States for Social Security because he says he has a disability and the disability is he doesn't speak English. That is ridiculous. See, that's something they want to give them money for because here's what they're doing. This is a is a wealth transfer. Not only is it a replacement deal, right? But it is a wealth transfer from the American citizens to the illegals. They are enriching them. I, I think I recall when they was coming over here and we said Trump sent them back. Biden immediately came in office and went over and told them that I'm going to give you four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in reparations for your pain and suffering for being kicked out of this country by Donald Trump. This is crazy. That right there deserved an, an impeachment. The Republicans should have stood up at that moment and said, we will impeach you if you ever talk about, if you even think about uh, uh, citing such an act against the American people. But he did it. And the Republicans have sat on their thumbs. And, and, and let me say that the condition that America is in has been right laid at the feet now of not only the Democrats, we know who they are, but at the feet of weak, spineless, corrupt hearted Republicans. Yeah, uh, when you say this is a spiritual war, I, I agree with you. It's also, I think, a war between globalists and the people. And the globalists seem to be the Democrats and about, I'd say, almost three fourths of the Republicans, uh, the Absolutely. rhinos, or the Uniparty. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they have set this up this way in order to make sure that they uh, make the United States turn, turn almost into a third world country. That's what I think their plan is. They can't bring the third world up to our level. So they're like this. We're going to bring you down to their level. Yeah. It's it's absolutely crazy. And This uh, is the George Soros special. Uh, yeah. Open society, open borders. So they go over there. They collapse the economy in these third world countries. And, uh, and then they scatter them abroad, and then uh, we get planes and stuff, and we go over there, pick them up, bring them here. They bring them not throughout America, but to blue states. They're dropping these people off in New York and California and, and uh, Michigan and all the places that are blue, because what they're doing is uh, providing themselves extra Senate seats and extra congressional seats. And with these extra seats, they are going to, f they're gonna, going to uh, stack the court. They're going to stack the Supreme Court. And when they stack the Supreme Court, um, guess what, America? It's over. When they stack the Supreme Court, there's nothing that we can do because now they're going to have the people in, in, uh, in, the, Supreme, in the Supreme Court in the big house uh, making decisions that are anti-America. 
So are you for that bill that's going through Congress right now that uh, makes it where you can't count illegals on uh, the census? I'm absolutely for that, but I thought we already had that on, on the books that no. only American citizens, that only American citizens are counted in the census. No, but we uh, keep... Actually, on the, on the books, it's actually everybody. They count everybody, including illegals. Wow. Wow. No wonder why they're trying to flood these people in here. Um, yeah. Well, I don't I don't think we can count on the Republicans to get that through. Uh, they're not going to pass that. Yeah. But at least when President Donald Trump gets in, we'll have a couple of more years before the next census uh, to get these people out of the country and to fortify that law uh, with the Supreme Court. Because when it comes to, uh, you're right about the House seats, it's determined by uh, by population. And so that's the reason to bring them in here to actually get control of the House. And also, yeah. the, uh, another thing that's controlled by population is also the uh, uh, Electoral College. So I think they're also trying to get a hold of the Electoral College to get these blue states to go up higher. So they have mm -hmm. less, uh, they need less uh, uh, smaller states to actually win. Yeah, that, that is a wonderful, wonderful insight. I think that's a great insight on that so that they get more more points on the Electoral College and so that they don't have to go through uh, Texas or Florida or, uh, you know, Arizona. Yeah, I get it. Great point. Yeah, I, I think uh, people need to realize that, that uh, when it comes to uh, them voting, they don't have to vote to actually change an election. They just have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That right there is killing us. But uh, let's yeah. go ahead and go to uh, the next thing I want to talk to you about. And that is when it comes to uh, what's going on in Israel and uh, Palestine or Gaza. Uh, are you, uh, where, where are you at when it comes to that, that policy? I, I say that Israel has every right to defend itself and to retaliate uh, to the murder of innocent civilians. There shouldn't be any quarrel or, or any uh, questioning about that. But where, where I stop short is, is us funding another war while we're dealing with uh, a lot of stuff here at our border. I believe that there is a, a war perpetuated against us with the drugs coming in from China, the fentanyl. We have the open border of uh, military age uh, men coming into our country. We are under attack. We are in, in a soft war. Our farmland, our farm country, our water supply, our food supply is under attack. We are at war. Um, and I want to pay attention to that. I love Israel. I want to see them uh, retaliate. I want to see them uh, defend themselves. Uh, I am not for Hamas at all, but I don't want to see uh, their citizens, uh, their young, innocent people slain uh, in war. I want to see them go after Hamas and in that and, uh, and and let them restore their country because what's going to happen is is that any person who's scattered around there, this country under the Biden administration is looking to fly them over here and make them citizens in our country. I want them to restore their country and for them to remain there because here's the deal. Our culture is, is counterculture to their culture. We don't worship the same God. We don't eat the same food. We don't believe in the same thing when it comes to uh, minors and sexuality with adults. Uh, their their system is totally different from ours. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, you're already starting to see some of the differences in some of these bigger cities with uh, 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 the way they act towards women, not liking the way they're dressed and so on and so forth. Just that alone is uh, is uh, starting to create violence. You're, you're also seeing it in Europe as well. And yeah. if you want to curb that, really what needed to happen is like in Afghanistan, some of these allies we had, they, they should have went to Pakistan or Kuwait, somewhere Absolutely. close, somewhere close. That way, once uh, things settle down, if they want to start a revolution in, in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan, they can, they can go back. But if they're going to be in the United States, they're going to stay. That's right. And uh, so here, here's the deal. They, that's their plan to come here and populate. They they're not known for working, right? They co go to different countries, Europe and America, and live off of the system. And they work the system. They're good at it. Okay? They grow their families, and they and then they run for political office. I have a, a Muslim who's running in my race here, um, and he's a doctor, great American citizen. But I don't believe he can put his hand on the Bible and swear to uphold the Judeo-Christian principles of America. 
That's what America was established off of. That's what our constitution was established off of. And you have people like Elon Omar who are swearing to other countries. I mean, she should be in peace. But this is what happened. People are going to devote themselves to their faith and to their religion more than they will to this country or to any other country. And when we get people who have uh, worshiped false gods and other religions or whatever they worship, they're going to divorce their actions based on that. And America needs to wake up. Don't let your love make you uh, vulnerable and weak. Love God first and then love yourselves enough to protect yourselves by voting for people who are citizens and strong citizens who believe in Jesus Christ and have the same faith as you do. It's, this is what we've come down to. We have freedom of religion, but it doesn't mean we have to vote for people who have another type of religion. Uh, did you happen to see, speaking of religion, did you happen to see this uh, clip from CNN? I'm not, I'm not seeing it. MSNBC, where a woman is talking about the uh, how people that are Christians believe that our rights come from God. And everybody in the panel starts laughing and scoffing. And I, my question to you, Drone, is does our rights come from God? Absolutely. Unequivocally, our rights come from God. God is the one who gave us freedom. And our constitution is established upon that God-given freedom. And people who get in office are supposed to protect and uphold that freedom. That's what the constitution is all about. When those people are scoffing and laughing at that, they are paid to scoff and laugh at it. But if their freedom was taken away, you wouldn't see them scoffing and laughing, would you? There would, would be a very serious time. They'd be pleading and begging for freedom. And uh, so, uh, no, they can scoff all they want, but I know that they're paid uh, to do that. Yeah, when you watch anything on MSNBC or CNN, your first reaction, like these people are paid to say what they're saying. They actually, majority of the time, don't believe what they're saying. That's right. They're paid to uh, to lie to the American people. And President Donald Trump hit the nail on the head when he said that you all are uh, you all are the, the enemy of, of America. He told the media that you all are the enemy of America. And I believe that they are the false prophet. The media is the false prophet. And they're the ones that have these unclean spirits coming out of their mouths, seducing spirits, seducing America into doing things that are that are against God and against humanity. Uh, cut, putting a man on the magazine and cut, telling everybody that this is the woman of the year. And they're saying that they're the party that protects a woman's rights. No, they're not. They're the party that attacks women. They're the ones that are going after these young ladies who are working hard breaking track records and all of a sudden they bring a transgender in there and he's running a hundred yard hundred meters in 10.5 no woman can do that and so they're taking away the opportunity of women yeah a perfect example of that is they had the uh, uh soccer team for the olympic uh soccer team play a high school uh soccer team and a high school soccer team won it, it's horrible it, it, my daughter plays volleyball in junior college and I told her, I said, if it ever comes down to a, a time where they have a transgender on your team, that's the day that you're quitting the team. That's the day that you're quitting because your presence there is an approval for it. And I don't want you approving that. Just walk off. Arrange a walk off of the team. And if they want to have a transgender there, let them start a transgender team. Why should it take off, take away from you as a young woman and take away your privacy in your locker room to have this person in there with a mental illness who has a, 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 a mental condition that makes them think that they are a female when they are a male. Not only that, it takes away scholar, uh, it's, it takes away uh, Scholarship. uh, scholarships, uh, opportunities for these girls and also yes. all sorts of other opportunities for, from them. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, the Democrats ignore that part and they just go with, we, we just don't need to have these lines here. I'm like, okay, so you want lines when it comes to uh, when it comes to religion or race, but not when it comes to gender. That's stupid. Yeah, and well, they say believe the science, right? Well, the science is is that a man can can't have a baby. The science is that a woman is one who ovulates, who a woman a woman who has a womb. That's a woman, a female, the opposite of a man. And they they constantly say, well, they don't know what a woman is. Well, hey, well, you know, take a shower. You know, go to the bathroom. That'll tell you what's up. Well, Drone, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, this has been a great interview. I hope to have you on again after your big win. You're going to win. There's no doubt in my mind because I think Amen. God's with you, and I think God's with uh, MAGA and Donald Trump. 
Yes. And I think uh, we need to get people like you in there to actually course correct what's happening in the house. Because what's yes. happening in the house is absolutely uh, a shameful right now. Yes. yes. But guys, go ahead and check out the links below where you could actually go and check out his websites, go and donate to him. Go to his Twitter, go and subscribe, follow him on all the platforms we have down there at the bottom. And uh, Jerome, I'm going to leave you with the last word. Well, Jesus did this. He told his disciples, he said, I'm, I want to send you forth. I want to send you into these villages, but I don't want you to take an extra purse or an extra jacket or an extra coat. And he says, I want to test the heart of the people. Are they ready to support the kingdom? Are they ready to support that that belongs to God? Are they ready to support people who belong to God? And I want to say that to you. If you've been praying about this political situation, is Pastor Jerome Davison the answer to your prayers, or is one of my opponents the answer to your prayers? One of my opponents never mentioned God. The other one is a Muslim. I've been walking with God since I was 17. I've been pastoring for 30 years. I'm fighting for the America First agenda. I believe in parental rights. I believe in children. I believe in male and female. Am I the answer to your prayers? And if so, well then contribute five or $10 and ask someone else, family, friends, or whatever, to do the same. Honestly, I, I don't have money coming from any other source. Only you, the American people. And we'll see if you guys want to fight with me for freedom.